Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest Bitcoin technical analysis, as well as breaking news. Russia considering legalizing Bitcoin and crypto for global payments, according to Russia's central bank governor. Game theory in full effect. Let's go. We'll also be discussing over 41.5% of the Mt. Gox Bitcoin distributed as creditors continue to hodl where my hodl gang at. Holla. We'll also be discussing the SEC backs down on claiming that Solana, Cardano, Matic, and other tokens are securities in the Binance suit. We'll also be sharing the United States government holds $12 billion worth of Bitcoin, according to Arkham Intelligence, as well as tone deaf. The U.S. moves $2 billion Silk Road BTC right after Trump's stockpile pledge, literally within 48 hours after. I'll be sharing Cyphidi and Amos' response to this, as well as Max Kaiser and all that great stuff. We're also going to be discussing Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model. He projects Bitcoin to double in price within the next three months with a fat target sitting at about the $150,000 level. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. If you're new to the channel, very important to smash the likes and subscribe, then hit the bell icon to turn on notifications. That way you get notified each and every day when I go live, because sometimes we go live at different times. It just is what it is. Uh, today is pod episode number 1716. I'm your host, JV. It's July 30th, 2024. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we're currently correcting. You can see on Coin360, we just broke under 66,000. Bitcoin down 2% for the day. Ether uh, trading back under 3,300, down a half a percent on the day. Solana down 4%. XRP, surprisingly, in the green, but it always does its own thing. When the rest of the market dumps, XRP pumps and vice versa. But XRP is back up 5%, trading above 63 cents. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. Uh, the current crypto market cap sits at $2.37 trillion, with a Bitcoin market cap sitting at just shy of $1.3 trillion. We got roughly 66 billion worth of volume for the past 24 hours. Uh, Bitcoin dominance back on the decline at 54.9% as the Ether dominance barely back on the climb at 16.7%. I think yesterday was 16.5. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. We got Boom up 7%, XRP up almost 5%, and Mog up almost 4%. Below that, Cospa, Stellar Lumens, and Mantra. Now let me know which alts, if any, family you're bullish on for the bull. And checking out the crypto greed and fear. I'm sorry, before we hit the Crypto Green and Fear Index, here's the crypto bubbles to get the visual perspective. Not looking so pretty on the daily. Roughly, I'd say 90 to 95% of the tokens in the red. And zooming out on the monthly, safe to say, we could say maybe 60% in the green, 40% in the red. And zooming out, not zooming out, but Crypto Green and Fear Index. Today is a 67 greed. Yesterday, 74. Last week, a 71. And last month, a 47 neutral. So there you have it, crypto fam. Let me know your thoughts. I mean, I was really hoping for a $70,000 July close, but it's not looking that way anymore, unfortunately. And it's ironic that the markets started dumping right after the um, $2 billion moved from the U.S. government with rumors that the Dems are going to be selling that before Trump can take office and stockpile the Bitcoin. We'll be discussing that later in the show. But anyways, here's the latest astrology for the broskies. We'll also be pulling up some of the live charts for you guys. But here's what's happening in the market. Headline here reads, Bitcoin trader eyes 60,000 next as the bears force to fresh Bitcoin price rejection. Look at that bear. Let's send that mofo back to hibernation, yo. Uh, here you're looking at the one hour chart. Bitcoin stayed lower into the July 30th Asia trading session after a swift rejection at resistance sparked a $4,000 Bitcoin price drop. I mean, big red candles there on that chart. Uh, trading view showed Bitcoin trading at 66,000. Currently at the time of this recording, just shy. We just entered the 59 zone. I mean, 65 zone. The day prior, we seen volatility throughout. Bitcoin initially pushed into 70,000, got very close, but 
no cigar. And uh, an all too familiar sequence of events instead falling nearly 6% in a matter of hours. Now, the move accompanied $2 billion of Bitcoin leaving a wallet associated with the United States government, which we will be diving into that a lot deeper later in the show. The transaction contrasted with pledges to use the funds to build the Bitcoin strategic reserve or stockpile made by presidential candidates over the weekend, including RFK Jr., uh, who used the word strategic reserve uh, for the U.S. Treasury, and then uh, Trump said stockpile. They like to make a Bitcoin stockpile, which I believe means ultimately the same thing. Now, William Clemente, co-founder of crypto research firm Reflexivity, described the timing as not a coincidence. A uh, little more short-term flush in summer ranging than probably up only. Uh, and reacting, we had material indicators hoping that the bulls could stage a recovery to protect the rising trend line on the daily time frame. He argued the higher levels uh, than those seen this week, specifically 72,000 and above, depended upon on the bulls first flipping the old 2021 all-time high of 69,000 uh, to firm the support. Uh, quoting him here, that's the higher high that the bulls need to take out before Bitcoin is positioned to go after the all-time high. And I do think it will come eventually. But I maintain that we aren't going to see a sustainable move until a new all-time high is validated and an RS flip at 69 G's, uh, 69 G's, yo. Uh, meanwhile, trader Roman focused on the near-term Bitcoin price targets, which extended down to 60 G's. Should the market fall to such levels, he forecast sentiment would force a short squeeze, which would allow Bitcoin to return to the upper part of its longer-term trading range, quoting him here. Eyeing price targets of 64 and 60,000, respectively. My bet is sentiment gets ultra bearish at these levels. Then we full send up once again, full send it. Let's get it. And after tapping 70,000 yesterday, or I mean, getting very close to it, fellow trader Mark Cullen uh, shared his analysis. The question now is, will the trend line and golden zone retrace hold and create a higher low? Or will Bitcoin bounce for a lower high and roll over to the range low? I was looking to get run. Now, and some other analysis, Analytics platform CryptoQuant noted what it called increasing withdrawals uh, from the exchanges, noting that the mean amount of Bitcoin per exchange withdrawal transaction was on the rise, uh, quoting CryptoQuant here. This is despite uh, the fact that Bitcoin has entered a fluctuation area since February. The increase in Bitcoin outflow can be a positive sign regarding the possibility of price increase and breakup of the fluctuation area in the future. And before I pull up the live charts, some breaking news, Russia can considering legalizing Bitcoin and crypto for global payments. This is according to Russia's own central bank governor. So as the game theory continues, family, in full effect. Now let's pull up some of the live chart action. Uh, we'll start here on the one hour chart and we'll zoom our way out. Uh, you can see here we do have some targets, but let me switch the, um, the scene so it's so fresh and so clean on your screen. Boom, there you go. So we're currently sitting, we're dropping, man. Damn, 65.7, we're dropping a lot here this morning or this afternoon. And uh, But we do have some targets. We have a green target all the way down at 54,000. We also do have a target in the red sitting just above the current price action at about 2,300 higher at 68,000. Let's zoom out, uh, check out the four hour, and then we'll check out the one day, the one week, and the one month. Here's the four hour. We had some huge red candles, unfortunately, and you can see the uh, the pattern. Looks like we're staircasing down right now. Um, we do have a target on the four hour sitting all the way down at 54,000 uh, as well. And uh, checking out, let's see the one day chart. You can see right here. Um, one day looks bullish to me. Yeah, we had a couple of days corrective candles, as we can see, uh, two reds. But prior to that, we've been building up quite nicely since tapping that bottom of 53.5 from maybe a week ago, however long that's been. And uh, zooming out a little further, we'll look at the one week, which is typically the most bullish chart in Bitcoin. We still have that bullish flag formation, you can see on your screen, and we do have a very sexy cup and handle target just shy of 126,000. Plan B says Bitcoin price likely to double, surpassing this price target within the next three to five months. We'll be discussing that in great detail later in the show as our feature story, but you can already see the one week chart very lit. And as we continue to zoom out, we'll check out the one month. And uh, very bullish in my opinion here as well. You can see the clear, uh, pattern. Bitcoin going up, 
and currently trading sideways, but I think we're going to resume our bullish momentum in the month of August, which is just a couple of days away. Uh, and then we hit September, typically, you know, could be very bullish season, uh, third quarter, fourth quarter of this year. But let me know your thoughts, family. So let's just keep it moving. Uh, next story of the day, uh, Mount Gox HODL. Uh, the headline reads, over 41.5% of the Mt. Gox biddies distributed as creditors continue to HODL. Where my HODL gang? Diamond hands and laser eyes. Nearly half of the Bitcoin owed to Mt. Gox creditors has been distributed, but despite a decade of waiting, many creditors are still holding on to their coins. That in fact, over 41.5%, which is 59,000 Bitcoin, of the total 141,686 BTC has been redistributed to creditors of the defunct Mt. Gox exchange. Despite receiving nearly $4 billion worth of the Bitcoin, the Mt. Gox creditors are not selling. Here's what the Glassnode report shared. Creditors opted to receive BTC rather than fiat, which was new in Japanese bankruptcy law. And as such, it is relatively likely that only a subset of these distributed coins will be truly sold onto the market. Over $9.4 billion worth of Bitcoin was owed to approximately 127,000 Mt. Gox creditors who have been waiting for over 10 years to recover their funds, threatening significant sell pressure that could tank the Bitcoin price. The report comes a week after Kraken finished the Mt. Gox Bitcoin distribution to creditors July 24th. The Mt. Gox promised or prominent Bitcoin exchange based in Japan collapsed back in 2014 following a hack. The exchange was founded in 2010 and processed more than 70% of the Bitcoin transactions at its peak. Mt. Gox lost 850,000 BTC in its security breach, making it one of the biggest hacks of all time. And the hacker was just recently at the Nashville event partying it up. Can't make this ish up. <laughs> and while Glassnode notes that its theory rests on some degree of speculation, underlying data from crypto exchanges suggests Mt. Gox creditors not selling. As I predicted, family, why would they? They're the smart money. Notably, the spot cumulative volume delta, a metric that measures the net difference between spot buying and selling trade volume on centralized exchanges, has seen no significant uptick on Kraken after the Mt. Gox BTC distribution. The report notes, we see a marginal uptick in sell side pressure following the distribution. However, this remains well within typical day to day ranges. Now, the lack of selling pressure is surprising considering that the Bitcoin price increased over 8,500% in the past decade since the Mt. Gox collapse, but not surprising to those here in the HODL gang because we know HODL be thy name. And again, smart money, early Bitcoin investors. Why would they sell, especially post having At this time in the cycle, it's not so advantageous, right? There's nothing but downside. You can outweigh the upside versus the downside risk. And the upside, Bitcoin moonshots 10x. Downside, we correct the 60,000, maybe 50,000 if the bears really put up a fight, but uh, way more upside potential than downside right now. And then I think we would all agree on that one. Let me know, family. But anyways, uh, next story, eh? Here's the latest with Binance. Uh, the headline reads, SEC backs down on claiming Solana, Cardano, Matic, and other tokens are securities in the Binance suit. That's right. The US SEC is no longer asking a court to decide and deem the tokens named in the lawsuit against crypto exchange Binance as securities. On July 30th, the SEC filed a response to the court's minute order July 9, 2024. In the filing, the SEC wrote that it seeks to amend its complaint regarding the third-party crypto asset securities defined in its opposition to Binance's motion to dismiss. Take that, Mr. Gensler. And according to the SEC, this removes the need to issue a ruling as to the sufficiency of the allegations as to those tokens at this current time. This means the government agency no longer asked the court to decide whether the affected tokens are securities. Why? Because they're not. And in its suit against, and Gensler knew it wasn't, he's just targeting crypto exchanges to shake them down and uh, stifle innovation and stifle crypto. That's been his agenda since he's been elected chairman of the SEC. So in the suit against Binance, the SEC claims several tokens were securities. The list includes BNB, Binance USD, Solana, Cardano, Polygon slash Matic, Cosmos, The Sandbox, Decentraland, Axie Infinity, and Cody. These tokens are just part of the bigger list of tokens the SEC believes to be securities. In June of 2023, the SEC claimed at least 68 tokens were securities, affecting more than 100 billion worth of cryptos 
in the market. The SEC retracted its request to issue a ruling, follows presidential candidates' attempts to win over the pro-crypto. U.S. voters, as we know, uh, former President Trump pledged to end the war on crypto on the 27th as part of his election campaign. And at the Bitcoin Nashville conference, Trump said the U.S. will be the crypto capital of the planet. The Republican Party candidate also said he would fire SEC Chairman Gary Gensler on the first day as the president and appoint a crypto and Bitcoin presidential advisory council. And Trump repeated that twice because it was almost like a standing ovation. I got the biggest applaud in the event was when he said he would fire Gary. Trump said he will appoint a new chairman to help America build the future, not block the future. On the other side of that political spectrum, views on crypto are also beginning to shift. In fact, the Democratic Party members of the U.S. House of Representatives signed a letter calling for the party to take a forward-looking approach to blockchain and digital assets, but trust nothing they say. Watch what they do, family. And in the response, the letter advisors, the presidential candidate and incumbent Vice President uh, Obama Harris contacted crypto companies to repair the party's ties to the crypto industry. Meanwhile, they're more than likely looking to dump that 120,000 Bitcoin stockpile. Trump said that they would keep 100% of when he is elected president because it's currently on the move. So you can't make this ish up family. But there you have it. That's the latest on that. Bonance. Uh, next story of the day. Here we go. Uh, government has actually $12 billion worth of Bitcoin in total right now. So this is pretty massive. U.S. government holds $12 billion in Bitcoin, according to Arkham Intelligence. Uh, the U.S. government holds more than 183,000 Bitcoin, valued at roughly $12 billion. Again, 100,000 of those belong to the Mt. Gox investors in which they got a pay them back. So I think that would mean they really own 83,000 minus that after they're paid back, making it the largest geopolitical owner of the decentralized currency, the Biddy. According to data from Arkham Intelligence, the U.S. government also holds 50,000 ETH, 121 million USDT, 40,000 BNB, and over 10 million USDT. D.C. The most recent transactions from the U.S. government control wallets occurred July 29th for nearly 28,000 BTC, though the identity controlling and receiving the wallet is currently unknown. But you can see here it clearly shows you the U.S. government has almost 13 billion worth of total crypto and 12 billion of that is uh, in Bitcoin itself with 183,000 for 139 uh, biddies. So on July 27th, the final day of the Bitcoin conference in Nashville, Tennessee, Senator Cynthia Lummis announced the introduction of legislation to make Bitcoin a strategic reserve asset for the U.S. She spoke right after Trump. The Wyoming lawmaker proposed the plan to purchase 5% of the Bitcoin total supply and uh, hold the digital commodity as a treasury asset. Lummis called the proposal a 21st century Louisiana purchase, a reference to the purchase of the American Midwest from the French for $15 million dollars back in 1803. And former President Trump also hinted at creating a Bitcoin strategic reserve, he used the word stockpile. During his keynote address at the Bitcoin 2024 conference, the Republican presidential candidate promised not to sell any of the U.S. government's Bitcoin holdings. Trump stated he wants the Bitcoin industry to flourish in the U.S. and doesn't want to undermine the blockchain innovation through over-regulation. Do you hear that, Mr. Gensler? Independent presidential candidate RFK Jr. likewise promised to sign an executive order transferring the U.S. government's vast Bitcoin holdings to the U.S. Treasury and purchasing, I think he said, 550 Bitcoin per day until the United States owns at least 4 million BTC. Not, not everyone believes a strategic reserve is imminent. We have Ari Paul, Chief Information Officer of Block Tower, believes the odds are stacked against Bitcoin becoming a strategic reserve for the U.S. By 2028, the chance of this happening, he says, is 10 to 1. The executive explained that an informal announcement by presidential candidates not to sell the U.S. Bitcoin holdings is not enough to establish an official strategic reserve fund. But there you have it, yo. Uh, next story of the day, we discussed the $12 billion hodl. Now let's discuss this Trump pledge. Uh, this is actually very interesting. And then we'll discuss the $150,000 target from Plan B within the next 
90 days potentially. And then we'll dive into our live uh, Q&A. Headline reads, U.S. moves $2 billion Silk Road after Bitcoin or Road BTC after Trump's stockpile pledge. That's right. The U.S. government transferred $2 billion worth of the Bitcoin two days after Trump promised that the U.S. would never sell any of its Bitcoin during a speech at the Bitcoin 2024 Nashville conference. In what one commentator has labeled tone deaf. According to data from blockchain analytics platform Arcam, the government wallet which stored the Bitcoin seized from the shuttered dark web marketplace Silk Road in 2022 transferred 29,800 Bitcoin to an unknown wallet address July 29th. The funds have since moved to another unknown wallet. The transfer comes two days after Trump made a series of pro-crypto promises during the speech at the Bitcoin 2024 conference. He promised the U.S. government would not sell any of its currently held Bitcoin and declared that he would make the U.S. the crypto capital of the world by rolling out a series of crypto-friendly policies, including firing the chairman of the SEC, Gensler. And in addition to Trump's promise, Senator Lummis announced the introduction of legislation to make a Bitcoin strategic reserve asset for the United States. The Wyoming lawmaker proposed a plan to purchase 5% of the Bitcoin total supply and hold the digital commodity as a treasury asset. Lummis called the proposal a 21st century Louisiana purchase and uh, it was pretty lit. Binance's head of VIP and institutional, Catherine Shen, told uh, Cointelegraph the recent spotlight on Bitcoin from Trump and other U.S. officials was a positive sign for digital assets across the board, uh, quoting her here. What it clearly is meaningful is that politicians and prominent industry leaders are explicitly stating their positions, recognizing the value of the bitty and the monetary system, and making it clear that crypto is important on their agenda. This likely means more regulatory clarity as governments need to make their stance clear. She added, Binance had recently introduced what it calls the Capital People Technology Framework to isolate specific structural factors that influence market dynamics, quoting her here, the establishment of strategic Bitcoin reserves will drive structural conditions under all three categories of our CPT framework and advance the crypto market for the long term. Meanwhile, Galaxy Digital uh, Mike Novogratz lashed out at the recent fund movement, calling it a deaf or tone deaf move on the current administration. Uh, meanwhile, and he, I'll read you his uh, ex post. Moving Silk Road BTC two days after Trump's pledge is not a move. It's just, or to not move them is just dumb. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of controversy going on right here. Meanwhile, others suggest the transfer could be linked to July 1st agreement between crypto exchange Coinbase and the U.S. Marshals Service, which signed a deal to safeguard U.S. government crypto assets, as pointed out here by Adam. Cochran. But I actually want to share with you something I find very interesting. I'm going to share with you something Max wrote and then something Stifa Dianamis, creator of the Bitcoin Standard book, the author, wrote, which uh, I heavily agree with uh, a lot of the sentiment. So I want to read it to you. But first, Max wrote in response to someone sharing, Trump has a high chance of winning the presidency. If you want to fight for Bitcoin, you need to vote for Trump. Uh, Max responded, completely false. Bitcoin doesn't need Trump or any politician. Trump needs Bitcoin. You need to study more. You are not getting it. And now for Saifa Dianamis, it's nice that politicians are pandering to Bitcoiners, but promises are cheap. There is a major insurmountable obstacle to the U.S. government buying Bitcoin. The U.S. government does not own or control the U.S. Federal Reserve, which is a cartel of private banks. The U.S. president can't just tell this cartel what to do with their reserves. The U.S. dollar is the sacred cow of this cartel, and it's how they rob the entire planet. They are not about to give up this racket because some politician made a promise whose implications he don't understand. They are not going to buy a million bitcoins because the commitment to purchase bitcoin will just encourage everyone to dump their dollars and buy bitcoin and destroy the value of the dollar and their ability to rob the world with it. If you think they managed to build the century-old cartel while being stupid enough to fall for this or powerless enough to stop it, you're going to be disappointed to find out they are actually just evil. But can't the U.S. government buy Bitcoin itself without the Fed? With whose money exactly? The U.S. government is fiscally irresponsible and its biggest expense is debt servicing. There are good reasons your irresponsible debt slave friends never get Bitcoin and keep laughing at you when you bring it up. Irresponsible high time preference people and institutions don't understand the concept of long term savings. More importantly, the U.S. government needs the Fed to buy its debt and keep its treasury Ponzi going. Buying Bitcoin in spite of the Fed's 
opposition is a full-on declaration of war by the U.S. government against the Fed and the fiat dollar. And that is just not something that Trump or Kennedy is up for. Trump has repeatedly praised the Fed. Kennedy wants to implement some ridiculous low interest rate subsidized home lending scheme, only possible with the Fed creating cheap money. These men are not Andrew Jackson, nor are they even trying to be him. The real enemy of Bitcoin and humanity is the Fed. I want to repeat that line. The real enemy of Bitcoin and humanity is the Fed. The U.S. government is just its tool, and politicians are interchangeable actors that haven't mattered in decades. You are not going to destroy the Fed by promising to vote for one actor over another. Your only chance of destroying it is for Bitcoin to grow larger than the dollar and treasury bonds and for the dollar users to continue to get impoverished into oblivion while Bitcoiners thrive with their superior technology. I humbly suggest you not waste time and sats on this political circuit and work hard to stack sats instead. Very powerful words uh, coming from Saifedean. Let me know if you agree or disagree. He's ultimately claiming it's the Fed that is the biggest enemy of Bitcoin and humanity and that the U.S. government has no control over the Fed, a.k.a. the central banking cartels, which have been in power for a very long time. Now for our feature story of the day, Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model, predicts Bitcoin to double in price within the next three to five months, which ultimately means 140,000 plus in play. So let's break this baby down, shall we? It all started with this tweet from Plan B. I believe it was yesterday. Let me confirm. Yeah, July 29th. Yesterday, he got already got over a half a million views. Minor revenue bottomed after the April 2024 halving. I expect Bitcoin price to double from today in three to five months. And uh, let's run some of the calculations there. Doubling from 70,000 at the time of the prediction. I know we were just shy of 70,000, but we're going to round up. That would take us to, I believe, 140,000. Correct me if I'm wrong. And three months from now, let's say we're entering uh, August in two days. So let's just say August is today. August, September, October, November. So November. So ultimately from November to January of 2025, he believes uh, we're going to double in value. Uh, let me know if you agree. And uh, let's break it down a little more in detail here. So yeah, amid the ongoing bullish momentum, Bitcoin surged to around 70,000 just the other day, got very close. Notably, Plan B, author of the Stock to Flow model, predicts the Bitcoin price can double within the next three to five months, as I just pointed out from his tweet. So Plan B stated that the Bitcoin miner revenue has already bottomed out following the Bitcoin 2024 halving event, which occurred April 19th. In fact, we ushered in the having live on stream. Let me know if you're on that having watch family. It was pretty lit. And consequently, he does not foresee any further Bitcoin miner capitulation, which could alleviate the selling pressure on the Bitcoin price. Plan B also expects the Bitcoin price to double by the end of 2024, reaching a target of $150,000 per coin. Uh, Plan B's prediction is grounded in historical mining data presented in his chart. The Bitcoin stock to flow model, it measures the ratio between the circulating supply of the Bitcoin and the annual issuance of new coins. And it had previously provided accurate predictions on several occasions. And when one uh, follower on X suggested 140 might be the peak for Bitcoin, Plan B disagreed, asserting, no, I don't agree with 140,000 top and diminishing returns. In my opinion, Bitcoin will be 500,000 on average in 2024 to 2028 as per the stock to flow model, which ultimately means that between now and the next halving in 2028, he foresees Bitcoin being on average $500,000, and I believe I've seen before anywhere from 100000 to a million, hence the average of 500000 right in the middle. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I think that would be pretty lit. 500 Gs, a half a milli. Yes, please. And at the recent Bitcoin conference, as we've been sharing, top lawmakers advocated for the bitty as a reserve asset. We had Trump who claimed that Bitcoin's on the verge of surpassing silver as an asset class and could eventually overtake gold. That's right. I think uh, Bitcoin has already surpassed the silver market cap, but clearly we have been correcting, so we're probably back under it. And I think the gold market cap is probably still north of 16 trillion. And today, I think I pointed out that the Bitcoin market cap is only 1.3 trillion. So we have a lot of growth uh, to go. But yeah, you can see here, just then Donald Trump says Bitcoin will one day probably surpass the market cap of gold. That's a given. That's inevitable because 
Bitcoin's just getting started. Bitcoin's still a baby. Gold has been around for thousands of years. And Bitcoin is so superior in every metric in which you can measure. Bitcoin being portable. Gold, clearly not. Uh, Bitcoin having true scarcity. Gold, clearly not. There can only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. There's a finite limited supply. You can call gold relatively scarce, but far from true scarcity because they could always find more uh, digging in the earth, right? Now, it is highly... Uh, in his highly anticipated speech, Trump criticized Democratic lawmakers, including uh, Liz Warren, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler, and the Biden administration for harming the industry by not providing clear regulations. And of course, that's done on purpose. According to a CNBC report, Trump vowed that under his policy, the U.S. government would retain 100% of the Bitcoin it currently holds, which is roughly 210,000 worth of the Bitcoin, or Bitcoin in of itself, establishing a national strategic Bitcoin Reserve. Uh, the spot Bitcoin ETFs have experienced strong inflows as well over the past three weeks, and analysts anticipate this trend to continue. Additionally, all eyes on this week's U.S. Federal Reserve meeting as the crypto market looks for a catalyst in the form of potential rate cuts. And while 96% of investors believe the Fed will keep rates unchanged in August, 85 expect a 25 basis point interest rate cut heading into September. And with the U.S. elections fast approaching, further volatility in the prices is to be expected. Plan B is not alone in setting high price targets. Spot on chain has also predicted that the Bitcoin price will hit 100,000 by the end of this year and 150,000 by the first half of 2020. Five. So there you have it, yo. Let me know if you agree, disagree with Plan B's bullish price prediction within the next three to five months. So potentially this year, by the end of the year, fourth quarter, 140,000 per biddy. Let me know your honest thoughts and I'll read your comments out loud family. Personally, I feel that's easy peasy. It's very possible, very doable. Uh, Bitcoin has no top because as we all know, fiat has no bottom. So Bitcoin will continue to do what it does best. Number go up. You feel me? Bitcoin will head into the bear market, says Mango. Gold is not easy, says Greatness. No, it won't. Bitcoin and gold are only going up, says Dan. Dan, Bitcoin is over, says Mango. Mango, you come to the wrong channel, broski. Bitcoin is done this year, heading into the bear market. You, you're crazy if you think the bull market is over, family. Historically, every single cycle that become that come before this fourth cycle we're in, the three previous cycles, 2012 having, 2016 and 2020, we soar up to 18 months post having. We just had a having. We haven't even began to soar. We're still sitting under the previous cycle all-time high, which we achieved on November 10th of 2021. Do you understand that? We're sitting under that price, which is crazy. Four years later, you know what I mean? But yeah, 2012 having, we went parabolic in 2013, insane price action. Uh, 2016, uh, you know, it was a few hundred dollars Bitcoin. And then by the end of uh, 2017, we hit the 20,000 all-time high. Yeah, I mean, and then in uh, 2020, Bitcoin was, I think, sub 20,000. And then we soared all the way up to 69,000 within a matter of months and probably would have soar soared all the way up to 100,000 if we didn't have bad actors like Sam Bankman Freed, FTX, Terra Luna, and all that crap. You know what I mean? Bitcoin epoch or era, call it what you want. It is the next epoch era as the last low, November 2022. This next run may mimic the first halving event. Ah, 98XY, more adoption than ever. Let's freaking go!